Let's rock. Uh, so over the past 10 years, uh, this you know, Grayson gained experience as an artist, an animator, a lead, ninja, and a development director. This was until he was hit by the light of art, sus art outsourcing in 2007 at Sony Online. At Sony, he built a team that managed outsourcing for DC Universe Online, Star Wars Galaxies, and a few other Sony IPs. After a tour of duty at Electronic Arts on Armia 2, he was airlifted under the cover of darkness into Blizzard Entertainment to embark on an epic outsourcing journey deep into new territory. Um, today, he's here to share a couple of his war uh, stories with outsourcing in a war zone. So let's give it up for Grayson. Thank you. So, um, so uh, thank you for the intro. That was awesome. Um, so my name is Grayson Chalmers. I'm the outsource manager at Blizzard. Um, what I wanted to talk today the title is Outsourcing in a War Zone. At first, so what I'm going to get into is I'm going to tell a little bit of a story, and then we're going to get into some audience questions. I'm really curious to sort of see what you guys do. The core of this talk is talking about due, dil due diligence and sort of what you guys put into your due diligence. I'm going to talk about sort of a pitch, how I handle due diligence, and I'm hoping to start a good discussion. I'm going to poke the bear a little bit with this talk, and that's sort of on purpose. I really want to sort of stir up some discussion. Um, so as you answer the questions, sort of be thinking and analyzing about your own due diligence process. The questions are going to be, um, I want you to think about them both for the buyers and the sellers in this room. So if you're a buyer, the questions are going to be focused on you know, how you go out into the world and, and buy art services. And for the sellers, it's going to be just flip the question around and talk, and then talk about uh, the, the buyers that you interact with in that, that situation. So let me start it off with a, a quick story. So in Kiev, Ukraine, in February uh, 2014, this was the situation. It was a little bit tense. Um, but you know what was happening just a few blocks from here? I was working with a team that was delivering awesome art assets for me. Now, if you talk to some of the folks in the room, and if I did a a full-blown due diligence process, and I sort of looked at the region and looked at you know, what was happening. If I landed at the airport and had to drive past this on the way to a, an art studio, uh, you know, would, would, you, would you continue to work with them? You know, would, is that something, would that be a concern to you? Um, yeah, so I had a small group of people delivering awesome, awesome art the whole time through this. While this was going on, while I was watching the news and everything. So my first question is, I get on the phone, I'm like, are you guys OK? Like, is everything going all right? And they're like, yeah, we're fine. So, was, so my, my general pitch is that if there's a general baseline of safety for a team, I want to be working with talented folks no matter where they are, no matter what the situation is around them. Um, We'll, I'll get more into details later, but I just want to sort of give context. And it still, it still sort of blows me away to think about, I see this, and then I go, oh my god, like I, it was literally down the street was, was my team. And, and it was going great. Like the business art was getting delivered, and, the, and it was going well. Um, so as, as scary as this is, I don't, we'll, we'll get into it more later, but I essentially don't want I don't want things to scare you away from good artists and good teams and good people, um, because there's always going to be there's always going to be stuff going on. But we, as long as there's sort of a baseline, and I'll sort of go into that more later. All right. So for, I guess first question is a few, a few people were walking around, but I want to make sure everyone has the app because we're about to do some like cool interactive question stuff. Um, so for the uh, the question time, so I'm going to get into if you guys could load your app. And it says buyers, but it's actually going to be for both. So I'll just have you flip, your, flip the, uh, the questions around if you're a seller, because it'd still be good. My questions are going to still be valuable either way. Um, so if you go into the, it's the polls section. Let me double check. Yep, so it's the polls. If you go on the menu on the left-hand side, scroll all the way down, there's polls. And then sessions, outsourcing, and a war zone. I'm going to walk you through some of these uh, questions. So the, the, real, the real thing I want to sort of dig into on is, for you guys, what is your due diligence process? And so these, these questions are going to be focused on, I want to know how sort of deep and in-depth you go um, with your due diligence, due diligence before you start working with the studio. 
All right, so the first question is, okay, so let's, let's go through um, the due diligence process. Um, so in the app, I'm gonna give you guys probably, right now, let's see, we, maybe about five minutes to sort of roll through these questions. Um, but essentially what I wanna know is, is uh, yeah, these are, these are sort of dig in to see how detailed you go in the due diligence process. So the first one is, do you check studio financials? Do you fly in, do you ask for bank records? Do you, you know, are they in debt? Right, you know, it, there's a whole sort of level of detail that I want, I'm curious about. Do you check studio financials? Next one is uh, studio network and phys physical security. Do you check card readers? Do you require your, the team that you're working for to be sectioned off from the rest of the team in the building? Um, do you make sure that they have offsite backup in place? Is there, you know, do you, is there sort of a level of both physical and network security that you require? All right, so the next one is, do you, do you check studio legal and insurance coverage? So this is another, another one is, you know, do, you, do they have insurance coverage? So if, you know, if, if, they, if it gets flooded, do they have the money to replace the, the, the computers and the servers? Um, do they have uh, legal coverage so if you or someone else sues them, they can, they're able to stay in business? These are all valid questions, but I'm just sort of curious from you guys to see uh, how in depth we, you guys go. And then again, on the vendor side, if you're, if you're a, a seller, talk about how many times, or has a, has a buyer ever asked you uh, legal, um, you know, physical and network security stuff? Have they ever come to your studio to check that out as well? Um, all right, so the next one is, do you get a uh, a studio sort of skill and experience level breakdown. You know, do you require, do you want to know about all the people in the studio and you know, what's their background and where do they came from? How long have they been in the game industry? Um, all right, and, and sort of the, the cap to that is, do you then visit the studio to confirm this? And again, on the, on the vendor seller side, do you have people come visit you before they're willing to say, all right, we're gonna do, do work together? So that's, all these questions are, do you dig into this information before you start work with them? Um, and then after that, so vendor office visit, and then it's next, do you require an art test? Um, do you ask the studio to perform any sort of um, artistic test before you jump into to working with them? So that's sort of, I, I wanna get an idea from you guys how, how in depth you guys go. And now the second part of that is, all right, that, that sounds, that's good, safe business, I'll say. Um, but I'm curious how much calendar time does that take you? So the next question is how much calendar time does that due diligence take you to complete? So from start to finish, from the time a, uh, a seller first introduces themselves to you, how long does it take until you're producing art? All right, and the next one is how many total days of effort does it take to complete the due diligence process? Both. And this one, do your, do your best to estimate, but you know, you've prepared a due diligence Excel sheet and you sent it out to the vendor. They spent some time filling it out. You get it back, you sort of analyze it and balance it against some of the other uh, teams that you're considering. Um, how many mandates does that take? You know? Next one, what percentage of studios that start your due diligence process pass into production? So okay, how many times do you hand it out and then how many sort of continue on. Um, yeah, it's a, it, I'm curious to see how that, get, how that goes. And then uh, the next one is, have you ever found a studio that you believed would be great, but you had to pass on because they failed a portion due diligence? If you ever saw a studio, or on the, on the seller side, it's, you know, has a, has a buyer ever passed on you because they, they come to you and say, you're an amazing team of artists or engineers or I'm using art for this, for this presentation, but really sub in any sort of skill. Um, and have they passed saying, I'm really sorry, you don't have the ability to do proper, you know, you, you, do, you don't have the, the physical security that we need, or you don't have the level of insurance that we need, and sorry, we, we can't, we, we have to pass on you. Um, and then the last one. So after sort of answering all those questions, and after thinking through all that, is all that investment in time and money and, and all that effort, is it worth it? Do you believe that checking, checking into all the, the level of detail that you went through, do you believe that that's worth it? Do you think that that made, did it 
save you? I'm gonna ask you some questions later on. There's gonna be a discussion part. I'm hoping to, to hear some stories from you guys. Do you think it saved you? Do you feel like you did, was it good that you went through that? And do you think it, it helped you do good business? Or do you feel like it was too much and it's, and it's really sort of gotten the way of what you were trying to do? Um, I'm, I'm sort of curious how you guys feel in the room. Um, because I know we all work for, you know, some, some of us work for uh, much larger parent companies and, you know, I'm sure uh, my, my Blizzard lawyers are gonna scream at me once they see this talk, but um, do you feel it's worth it? You know, I mean, and I realize you, you have to, you sometimes have to check this stuff and yet you have to, you have to do what's right for the larger company you work for, but at the same time, um, is it worth it? And I want you guys to answer that question honestly. All right, so um, as long as everyone was able to log in and answer those questions, we're gonna go through, go through the rest of, there's a, there's a little bit more of the talk that I'm gonna go through, and then at the end, I'm gonna pull up the poll results from all the questions you just answered, and then we're gonna sort of see how you guys feel, and, and I'm gonna open it up to, to stories and, and, and questions and discussion from you guys. Um, but I'm gonna go into my pitch on why I think it's not necessarily worth it. And again, I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping to poke the bear a little bit, but. All right, so again, it's, it's, you know, that stuff takes time. That's all good, but it takes time. And what, um, what level passed in production, had to pass in a good studio, is it worth it? All right, so now what's your primary objective? The reason you went through all of this, why? Why did you do this? So that what? So that you can make art, or engineering, or software, or you know, whatever. But remember why you're doing this in the first place. I believe it's art. And and as long as you're doing, as long as you're going about business with what is your main objective, keep that in mind because I don't want you to lose focus on what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find the most talented artists all over the world and work with each other. Um, we're trying just to connect people and make cool stuff. Um, and I don't, I don't want to get lost in, in network security and, and all that stuff. There is, a, there is a baseline level, but, so what I, what I wanna briefly mention before I get too deep into this, what I am not advocating, but I'm not advocating any wildly risky behavior in either vendor selection. Uh, you know, there, there are baselines of, if I was in Kiev and, this, and the employees of the studio I'm working with are not safe, then guys, don't worry about me, get yourself safe and we'll work together when, when stuff works out. So there's a baseline of like, I don't want, I'm not advocating wildly risky behavior or, or immoral behavior. I'm not here to take advantage of a situation. I'm not, you know, if, if someone's pricing themselves way below market value because of the people they're hiring in the region, I'm not, not advocating that. What I'm, what I'm saying is, um, anyway, just keep in mind throughout, throughout all this, I'm not, I wanna make sure there is sort of a baseline level of, of we are humans working together, but what I wanna make sure is we don't get distracted by details and that we focus on the art that we're producing. So as long as, yeah, so with art as your, with art as your objective, I'm gonna pitch a very simple due diligence process to you. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what I do at Blizzard uh, and about sort of why I believe, why I believe in that. So the first thing, so the due diligence process, we're gonna go into a little bit more detail on that in the next slide, but as part of that, get your baseline of information and then start slow. Even internal artists need time to ramp up. If I was gonna hire an internal person, they're still gonna take a month or two or sometimes three to ramp up and get my style. So don't expect to be introduced to a, a studio somewhere on the other side of the world and go, okay, you're making art for me and I expect uh, quality results the minute you pass all, any of my due diligence process. That's just not gonna happen. I wouldn't expect that from an internal person. I'm not gonna expect that from someone outside of the building. Even if they're across the street, it's, you know, the, the level of complexity goes up. You guys know this, but um, yeah, start slow. Be human and do good business. So with this one, I'm a big fan of David Rock's uh, scarf model. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on this. I wanna, I wanna leave this up for you guys to, to sort of dig into, but it's essentially a, a way of managing people, and I really believe that it works not, not only if the people are sitting next to you in the office or if they're on the other side of the world. I think it's a human way of interacting with people. Um, again, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys do sort of your own research on this and see how you feel about it, but essentially SCARF stands for 
um, status, uh, essentially someone's, someone's relative importance to other people, uh, certainty about being able to pred predict the future, autonomy provides a sense of control over events, relatedness, a sense of safety with others, um, and then fairness. Uh, fairness is the perception of fair exchanges between people. So again, I really, I'm a big fan of that because it's, you know, we are, we're here to do the same thing and everyone wants to do the best job they can. And so why not treat them that way? And I want to make sure that I treat people that way, again, whether they're sitting in my office or whether I'm working with you on the other side of the world. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a big fan. All right, so let's get into a simple due diligence process. And so here's going to be the crazy simple sort of method that, I, that I've been using at Blizzard, and actually be way before Blizzard, even at, when I was at uh, Sony Online, that we used for due diligence. Portfolio review, it's pretty simple, but review whatever, review the existing body of work that a, that a studio has, you know, um, and, uh, whether it's engineering or art or whatever it is. Um, basic studio info, and what I mean by that is the simple version that I do is what IPs have you worked on? Sort of tell me about your past. I, I want to read your resume. Uh, how long have you been in business? You know, did you, did you just form with your college buddies last year? Or have you been in business for 10 years and you've worked on a whole bunch of stuff? I want to know about that. Because that'll tell me a lot about you know, who you are and, and, and what you do. Um, and I can, I can sort of answer a lot of questions uh, on top of just knowing that. Well, it's OK. Well, you've been in business for 10 years. Uh, there hasn't been any leaks out of your studio. I don't I trust you. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a certain level of, by asking some t simple questions, you can sort of you get a, a feeling. Um, and, I, and I do check, you know, I do check some other stuff. I check, like, you know, tell me about the number of artists. Uh, tell me about your turnover, that sort of stuff. And I'm just, I'm, I'm banking on, on honesty on this situation. But I just sort of want to get a vibe. As part of that, I will also do, uh, it's, I mean, it's amazing the sort of the world we live in these days, but it's also funny how old school some of this stuff is. You know, when I used to apply for a job when I was a kid, it's like I had to list references, and people would call up the, 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 the guy I used to work for and go, you know, how did Grayson do? Did he do a good job? What was your, you know, tell me about how it felt for him to work for you. Um, but with the world we live in, it's, you have that ability plus more. So imagine doing a, you know, if I'm approached by a, a studio, I'll, I'm going to dig into your, to your sort of your social network and who I can find on LinkedIn that works for your studio. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to try to see what's going on on Facebook. Is it you know who who I want to know who you are and I'm going to find that way any way I can. And again, I'm, I'm not going to do it in a shady way. It's just tell me I want to learn about you. You know, do you post on Polycount? I want to see the art that you post on there. Are you are your guys involved in in, in um, you know Zebra Central or, or any of the web art websites? Again, it's just about getting to know someone and sort of checking into who they are. And you know, if 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 a buyer approaches me, have you worked with? Tell me about the other people you've worked for. And I'm going to go quiz them. You know, I'm going to be like, hey, how was it? How'd they do for you? Um, and I'm, I'm not going to take just one person's uh, opinion. I realize it's sort of like a Yelp star system where there's going to be good feedback and bad feedback. But uh, I, I want to know about you, and that includes getting sort of feedback from how you do business. Um, and let's see, so on top of that, I didn't list them out, but I, I usually also do a, um, like a mock bid. Uh, I like to do mock bids because that sort of tells me a lot about, OK, when we're ready to work together, um, what does is, what is the bid process go like? Are you, is your mandate rate expensive, but you're super fast? Or are you slow, but then it's a sort of a good gauge of like what it's going to be like to work with you. But really, I wanted to focus on. OK, if, if your portfolio looks good, if I know your address is and where to send you know, NDA paperwork to, and if all the people I talk to say you're awesome and you post on Polycount a lot, I'm going to make art with you. That's it. It's that simple. I'm not going to fly out there. I'm not going to plug in a USB stick and check that you told the truth on some Excel sheet that you sent me. Um, I trust that you will do business and you will treat working for me the same way I, I hope to treat you guys. Um, so let's make art. The whole point is so let's, let's make art. And let's see how it goes. So we started, and I mentioned it before, but starting slow is sort of the key to this. All right, let's make art. Let's do one. And then if that goes well and like I provide good feedback to you and my guys are ready to, they have all the information needed to sort of set you up for success, 
cool. And then how do how does the feedback process go? Do you respond quickly? Do does your does your do you lose email connection a couple times a week and I don't hear from you for a week and a half? Like that's not good. And I'm not going to find that out through an Excel sheet. You know, I need to, I need to experience going through the process. Let's just jump in and start slow and then ramp up and see how it goes. Um, yeah, I think so. That's that's really the the sort of the focus of it all. So to be fair, this is risky. This has an inherent amount of risk to it. So I wanted to be honest about this. There's a lot of, there's two sides of it. So as much as I believe in doing this process, I, I, I am essentially, there, there are risks that I'm assuming. There are, there are legitimate physical and technical security risks that I'm sort of just saying, if you've been in business for a while and you haven't leaked anything and you haven't had people walk out with a computer and post up the second half of my cinematic online, then I trust you. Then I trust whatever process you have in place is working. Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't really care what that process is as long as it's working. Um, so there is legitimate risks. You know, if, if all of a sudden I was working with uh, someone in, in, um, in the Ukraine, in Crimea, and all of a sudden now Crimean separate country, so how do I handle that? You know, that's gonna, that might cause some stuff for me. Um, do you have offsite backup? Is your place gonna burn down and, and we're gonna lose all the data? Use Dropbox or something like that. Don't, you know, don't rely on servers no matter where they're located. Um, IP security, you know, is, you know, is there, um, are you working with someone that's actually just working out of a, a, a rented office space where people can just walk over and look, at the, look over their shoulder at what you're working on? Those are, those are legitimate risks. And so I, I, I wanna be honest about, but again, if you've been doing business and it, and it works, then I'm not gonna mess with you. You know what I mean? Like that's, I trust you to do the business the right way. Um, so then business concerns, essentially, um, you know, I'm not gonna check your financials. Um, are you in debt? Do you have you know, insurance coverage? Again, to a certain extent, to me, as long as you make art, and as long as it's working, that's sort of, and as long as you're safe and you know, we're having a good time working together, and as long as no one's taking advantage of the other person, then, then that's all I care about, is, is, the, is what we're here to build. Uh, the next one is soft sciences. Um, you know, what's, what's the hiring practice? You know, I don't, I will not have any All right, just make sure. I will not have any knowledge of a vendor's, you know, hiring practices or where they're getting their people. I may ask questions, you know, are, are you hiring mostly students? Are you getting them from a, 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 their game studio in town? But again, I don't want a micro. that we're gonna do our do the best we can, do the best business we can together. Um, but trust me. So I wanted to be sort of upfront about that. Uh, but again, not here to micromanage, that's not what I wanna do, and the whole point is to, I'm hiring you because I, you know, and you're working for me because you trust me and I wanna trust you and, and I wanna just make cool shit together. Um, all right, the next one is it does take time to ramp up. I'm not gonna pretend like this totally cuts the time in half. So you can spend the six months going through a due diligence process and say, okay, now we're gonna work for you. And then I'm gonna give you 50 assets on day one. All right, well, that's sort of one way to doing it. It's sort of a flat line and then this big step up. Um, so what I'm, I'm advocating is the one and then two and then four and then six, you know, slowly build up. So I might spend six months building up to 50 assets in a batch, but I, I truly believe that that's sort of a safer, approaches on safer approach on both sides. What if you go through this big due diligence process with me, I give you 50 assets, and you don't like how I give feedback. I do video feedback when you'd really like a, just a, photo, a Word doc markup, or you know, we don't know anything about making art together until six months later and, and 50 assets deep. So why not do a slow build up, we get sort of used to each other, because I, I wanna be as good of a buyer as I wanna hire good service providers in this situation. And I really think the only way to go about that is by just jumping in. But I do wanna highlight it, 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 this is not an overnight process. I don't, that's, making the due diligence smaller is not necessarily to deliver lots of assets faster. I think you can start production quicker, but it doesn't necessarily, um, it's not a firefighting technique, just oh, that due diligence, we don't need that. 50 assets, go. No, no, that's gonna fail, sorry. All right, so what are the benefits? I talked a little bit about some of them in between. 
um, I really believe in sort of art without borders. You know, it is, as long as you have power and internet access and talent, I want to find you and I want to work with you. Like, that's it. Um, and again, there's that baseline. I'm not advocating anything dangerous or bad, but. All right, next one is lower cost of entry. Take the money you're going to spend on a plane ticket. Take the, the money that you're going to spend bringing two directors into a meeting room to review uh, you know, 10 vendors that have filled out your Excel sheet. Take all that money and buy an asset. Buy two assets, buy three. Um, save, your, save your cost on the plane tickets and just start. Start making art. Um, all right, so the third one is a, you cast a wider net. So the cool part about this is because my barrier to entry is lower, I can sort of, I'll say, experiment more. If I find a, a pool of talented artists in, um, in St. Petersburg, and then I find some in, in, in the Ukraine, and then I find some in Mexico, wherever they are, I can, I can say, well, well, cool. I don't need to go to my boss and ask for like three plane tickets. I can just say, cool, I've got three assets. Hey, guys, what, give me a bid for this asset. Give me a bid. And just start making art and see how that process goes. Um, and I can, I can discover studios and people and talent and, and sort of hubs of, of awesomeness that I would have discovered if I dive in and sort of go through this big due diligence process and just get lost in that. So the next one is no epic fails. And so this sort of goes into that sort of 50 asset thing. Okay, you did my big due diligence, now I give you 50 assets. If, if for whatever reason it doesn't work, if you don't like the way I provide feedback, if, if there's some sort of miscommunication and we just aren't working together well, that 50 assets are gonna fall on your face and you're sitting there holding the back, it's like, oh, but they passed my big due diligence, why didn't it work? Um, and so you, that can't happen if you start with one and then two. Worst case scenario, maybe, maybe three assets fail, maybe four if, if you know, something happens. Um, but it's, there's no like, you were counting on these guys for all these assets, what happened? You know, I like that. General diversity, if I'm investing in stocks, I'm gonna diversify my, 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 my investments. And so at the same time, like, it's, if the US dollar tanks or if the US dollar skyrockets or if, uh, if the euro skyrockets or tanks, I'm working with studios all over the world. So no matter sort of what happens in the world, I'm working with everyone. Um, so I can sort of, I can sort of balance uh, balance what's happening. Um, if the talent migrates, if for some reason uh, I'm outsourcing to a studio in Austin, Texas, or in, you know somewhere else in the world, like, and all of a sudden the talent migrates to somewhere, I don't even necessarily need to know why it happened but I will notice that it happened, and that's fine. I just sort of load balance to some other folks that I'm working with. Um, so I think that that's sort of, it's, it's good to, to, to be working with a whole bunch of people. Um, and it's flexible, and sort of, I touched on this a little bit, but it's, it's nimble, you can, it's flexible in terms of load balancing, talent balancing, cost balancing. Um, and this sort of goes along with like playing to people's strengths, I want to, I may work with a whole bunch of different uh, service providers, and then some are gonna be good at animation, some are gonna be good at hard surface stuff, some at more organic stuff, and that's fine, that's what I want. Because all of a sudden, if my, if my request from the development team, if I get a whole bunch of hard surface stuff, cool, I've already got some people ramped up. I'm not having to rely on sort of one or two studios that I sort of invested, um, I put a lot of sort of time and effort into. Um, I've got a whole suite of got a whole bunch of talented folks spread out all over and it's okay cool well, what are you up to are you busy this month and okay you're really good at hard surface I've got some cool stuff for you or um, it's just it, it's more flexible and, and I, I like that I think there's a lot of benefit to that so again remember your primary objective it's it's art or it's engineering or whatever that service is that you're providing or that you're buying keep focus on that do good business and be a good human being but make sure that you don't forget about what you're trying to do um, and base your decisions around that. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll pull open the, we'll pull open the, the poll results and I wanted to sort of hear about uh, from you guys what, what you think. Um, but let's, let's go over the polls because I'm super curious to sort of see how that stuff went. All right, so the first one is, do you check Studio Financials, 
That's cool. 50-50. All right. Well, that's, that's, this is good. I'm, I'm sort of happy to see that, you know, so of the people uh, that, that do do it, you know, in the back of your mind, I, I kind of want you always thinking about, you know, is it worth it and would you do it differently if it was completely up to you? And for the, for the people on the no side, it's do you feel completely nervous that you don't, you know? Um, <laughs> all right, so the next one is physical network security. It'd be funny if the whole thing is, uh, oh, interesting. Okay, cool. So you don't check financials, but you make sure that the, the place is secure and the, the computers are secure. That's cool. All right. Insurance coverage. This is going to be, this will be interesting. Wow. That's much higher than I expected. That's super cool. All right. So a lot of people check, but no one checks financials, or not no one checks financials, but less people check financials than do network security and legal insurance coverage. All right. Uh, skill and experience breakdown. Yes, all right, that's, that's good. I feel like that's, that's a pretty good one. You want to know who you're working with. You know, let's, let's find out about, um, do you actually visit the vendor's office? Yes, that is a very big 22 yes and 10 no. It's very similar to the last one. It sounds like a lot of people are going to, and, and I'm going to assume, and if, it, if I'm assuming wrong, I want to hear about it afterwards, but I'm assuming that you do the vendor visit before you start working with them and not sort of after um, our test. Let's take a look. Wow. Nice. Makes sense. I'm realizing afterwards I should have asked like questions about is it a free art test or is it a paid sort of first round contract. Um, but save that, and I want to hear stories after, after we go through the rest of these. All right, so how long does this take to complete? So those are a lot of, a lot of good questions and a lot of good um, one to two weeks. And so that is calendar time. So we got one to two weeks. We got 10 people. We've got up to a month, nine people. And then this is, oh, it's ordered funny. OK. Um, less than a week. Two to four months, that's a lot. And then one person more than six months, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty big. Um, all right, man days of effort. All right, a pretty good spread. But again, I'm really sorry. Oh, no, wait, that's less than, that's more than one day. What? Less than a day. OK, good. It's ordered very funny. Sorry about that. I guess it's ordered by the amount. That's what it is. All right, so one to two days is six people. Three to five days is six people. 10 to 20 days. All right, so that's a, that's a, that's a lot of time. 10 to 20 days are just man effort. Um, five to 10 days, and then less than one month. OK, so it's a good spread. So not too many people uh, greater than one month or less than one month. I, I think I messed that up. Hmm, okay. What, is this one? what percentage of studios? OK, this is a good one. I'm super curious about this one. All right, so 40 to 60% pass. That's actually good. I'm, I'm happy to see that. 0 to 20. OK. That's a decent amount. 60 to 80% pass. That's a big success rate. That's pretty good, five people. And 80 to 100. Wow, that was very cool. Five people. And then four on 20 to 40. Okay. It's a good spread. So this is, did you have to pass on someone? Wow, that's a big number. All right, so this is, you had to pass in a studio because uh, they failed a portion, even if you believed that, you know, believed that they were a talented, good studio. And that sucks, because then on the other side of it, if I'm a service provider and I'm like, and, and someone tells me, like, you're awesome, but I can't work with you because you don't have X amount of insurance or, or whatever, like, that would suck to be passed up on. Is all that investment worth it? Oh, then I pissed a lot of people off at this talk then. <laughs> so it's good. So I, honestly, it's sort of, I'm sort of happy that, that most of you feel like it's worth it. I guess I was going to be nervous that a whole lot of people were like, no, it's not worth it. Why the hell are we doing all this? So there's five of you that, that sort of, and this was at the beginning of the talk.